Um, okay, so this is the class assignment that was from March 30th. I was going to just write this up, um, but um, I figured why not just make a video of it as I write it up so that you can see what we're doing here. So uh, you should watch the video lecture notes five series and that introduces the Lorentz series and some technical stuff about this. So an annulus centered at Z0 with inner radius R1 and R2 um, is defined as like this. What an annulus is, is if you have a point Z0, then we can have an inner radius and an outer radius. This is R1, this is R2. The annulus is the space in between. And it doesn't include, note that it's less than, so it doesn't include the circles itself. And so a punctured disk, if I delete a point, radius of R2, we can call that the annulus at Z0, of inner radius zero and outer radius R2. So Lorentz theorem is the following. So A is, F of Z is analytic on an annulus um, where the inner radius is bigger than zero and R2 is bigger than R1, then, and gamma is a positively oriented, simple, closed, smooth curve, blah, blah, blah. Then the following conclusions hold. Um, so I just want to clear out some space here. So basically what we're saying is, is that if we have our annulus that goes around a point Z0, um, and if I pick gamma, any curve whose trace is entirely within there, that's gamma, um, I'm not quite sure now where I have the gamma there. Oh, I remember where I have the gamma. So the following conclusions hold. F of Z equals this sum, and you can write this, I mean, it's a big notation, but it's dot, 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 B to three over Z minus Z zero cubed plus B over two Z minus Z zero squared plus B one over Z minus Z zero plus A0 plus A1 Z minus Z0 squared plus dot, dot, dot. And this part is called the principal part of the series, of the, of the series for the function at the point Z0. Z0. And why this curve is there is because um, the video tells you how to calculate a k and b k the coefficients here um through various integrals and stuff and those formulas are not actually all that useful because um there are easier ways to figure out what the coefficients are so b1 the coefficient of b1 that's this term is particularly important and that's called the residue and it's called residue of f of z0 so um, what was this in class assignment then? F of Z is analytic on a punctured disk, uh, gamma is some thing. So I've got a punctured disk and I've got a path going around it. This is gamma and that's Z zero is inside. And this is my radius, whatever that I'm calling that, R2. So what is the integral around gamma of f of z? And so that's going to be the integral around gamma of all this stuff, right? So that's my integrand. You can integrate stuff terms by terms. I haven't done the video for proving that yet, but I will hopefully sometime soon. So what is this integral? We know that, for example, one over Z minus Z, one over Z minus Z zero cubed is the derivative of um, one over Z minus Z zero squared. And there's a factor in here that I should have uh, I think a two. Why is that important? One over Z minus Z zero cubed has an 
antiderivative, and in fact, the antiderivative is defined in the whole plane. So what does that mean? That means if I integrate this, I get zero because I'm integrating around a closed curve. And this is a function with an antiderivative. If I integrate this, um, that's gonna be zero because I'm integrating a function with an antiderivative around a closed curve. Same thing for all these terms. So the integral around gamma is gonna turn out to be v1 over z minus z0 dz. This is, if you look at the list of theorems, it's the TFAE theorem. So if we do the integration, this becomes b1 times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of z is this. So z minus z0 is just r e to the it on the bottom. The derivative of it is i r e to the it dt. All that cancels away, and we're left with 2 pi i b1. Right. So the only term that's not zero is B1. Right. And that's the residue. And so this is true. Important statement. So if you can find the residue, then you can integrate the loop. And if you've done physics, right, you know, if you have a point charge and you have an electric field coming out from the point charge in all sorts of directions, and you have a sphere that encloses the point charge, then the integral around the sphere of the flux is non-zero, right? And it's related to the intensity of the charge. But if you take a sphere that's away from the point charge, then all the electric stuff that goes in comes out, so the integral around the sphere of the flux equals zero. And so it's sort of the same thing here, right? If we integrate an analytic function that's analytic everywhere except at a point, um, if you have a closed loop, the integral will be zero. If the closed, if your loop goes around a place where there's a residue, you get a non-zero integral. It's sort of like flux. And that analogy can be made um, formal, but uh, it requires some work. Um, so f is a function analytic in a disk, disk, which means you have a Taylor series. So here's the Taylor series. So a0 equals f of z0, just plug in z0 everywhere. So f of z analytic in a disk. So how do we actually get Laurent series? Um, the easiest way to do is say, well, f of z is analytic, and that means g of z is an analytic function divided by z minus z0. That has to be analytic everywhere except at z0, because there's where you're defined, dividing by 0. So f of z has the Taylor series. Plus dot, dot, dot. So G of Z, you just take this Taylor series and you divide by Z minus Z naught, and ev everything gets pushed down a, um, a bit. Okay, so what's the relationship between F of Z zero and the residue of G of Z zero? Well, the residue, of g at z0 is the coefficient of the z minus z0 term. So that's a0. But a0 is equal to f of z0. So if f of z is, no, if g of z is a function divided by z minus z0, then the residue is just f of z0. So, so the residue is that, right? And you can actually show that pretty easily because e to the z over z, if you take the Taylor series for e to the z and you divide it by z, you get this. 
right? And so your residue is just one because it's the coefficient of the one of z term. And so what does that tell me about the integral around gamma of this? Well, that's two pi i times one, right? So gamma is a circle that goes around the singularity. And so the integral around the singularity is just two pi i times the residue. So same thing here. Oh, and this should be the residue at one, not at zero. What's the residue here? Well, our function f of z is, or g of z, oh, my notation is bad. Um, so g of z is the thing at the top. I'll call that like this. And so residue of the function, which is an analytic function divided by some linear term, is going to be g evaluated one, which is just sine of one. And so that tells me the integral around gamma. Again, this is a curve. Gamma is a curve that goes around the singularity, which is at z equals one. The integral around gamma of f of z dz is two pi i times sine of one. So you can do that integral pretty quickly. So f of z is one over one plus z squared. And we want to find the residue of this function at the point i. So you have to rewrite it in this way, right? An analytic function divided by z minus i. So that's not too bad, but it's a thing that people miss a little bit because the division throws them off. Uh, that's not right. Undo, 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 undo. So I can write this as one over z plus i times one over z minus i, which I can write as one over z plus i quantity divided by z minus i. And this function is analytic near z equals i. So what's my residue there? So the residue is of f at i is one over z plus i. With, no, sorry. Undo that. Residue of f of i is um, one over i plus i equals one over two i. So this is my function g of z. And the residue is this function evaluated as z equals i. So one over two i. Oh, g of z is this. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Okay, g of z is one over z plus i. It's this term. So I can rewrite this thing, which is a fraction times a fraction as this term divided by z minus i, and that gives me this. Okay, so that tells me that the residue is gonna be one over two i. So we can do the same thing here. one over one plus z squared is equal to one over z plus i times one over z minus i, which I can rewrite as one over z minus i divided by z plus i. So my g of z now is one over z minus i. And so the residue of f at minus i is what you get when you plug in minus i there. So it's minus one over two i. Great. So what's the situation here? I've got two places, i and minus i. f of z is one over one plus z squared, not defined at z equals i, z equals minus i. And so I've got some radius, large radius. And I want to know what's the integral around this circle? 
So if I take two smaller circles, one around here, so this is gamma, if I call this gamma one and this gamma two, this function is analytic everywhere between the circles, right? Outside of the two small circles, but inside there. So the deformation of paths principle or the path integration over multiple, multiply connected domains tells me that the integral around gamma is the same thing as the integral around gamma one and gamma two. And again, if you think about this in terms of point charges in physics, right? The two point charges are here. So the flux is emanating from these two things. So the flux out across these circles has to also go out there. So since there's no sources or anything in here, the integral around the outer loop is the sum of the integrals around the inner loops. So integral around gamma one of f of z dz equals two pi i times the residue, which is one over two i, so that equals pi. Integral around gamma two of f of z dz equals two pi i times the residue, which was minus one over two i equals minus pi. So the integral around the entire thing is going to be zero because um, the integral around one was positive and the other was negative. So, and so that gives us that. Um, so what am I doing? Now? 